Pop? Huh? How do you spell Cincinnati? Is it two ends and one end, or one end and two ends? I think it's four ends. <laughs> Junior, will you stop always asking me to help you with your homework? Figure it out for yourself. Cincinnati. Well, I'm writing a composition about a boy, and I've got him being born in Cincinnati. Well, let him get born in Brooklyn. That's got one in it. Brooklyn? Yeah, a baby don't care where it's born. All it wants is food. Okay, make a Brooklyn. What general drove through Georgia to the sea? What general drove General Motors? Huh? Yeah. How do you spell anthracite? Anthracite, A-N-N, A-N-N, fro-site. <laughs> what historic statement did General Sherman make as he drove through Georgia to the sea? What do you want with anthracite? Oh, I got this boy's father being a coal miner in Brooklyn. There ain't no coal mines in Brooklyn. <laughs> oh, I want it Cincinnati. Will you stop interrupting me, Junior? I got my own homework to do. Riley? Yeah? Dear, isn't it time you got started for night school? No, we're going late tonight. We got exams. Oh. Well, listen, don't you and Junior mess up this room. Now, I got the girls coming in for a meeting about the community chess campaign. Okay, okay. What Englishman discovered tobacco in the United States? Tobacco. Effie Boone. So, Walter Riley. So what? What are you doing in here? I came in the back way. Now, get your hat. I'm taking you out tonight. I got two seats for the wrestling matches. Wrestling? Nah, I got night school tonight. Forget it. Come to the wrestling. I got two wonderful seats reserved. Right at the end of the counter where Posen's Bar and Grill. They got a new television there. Well, I... No, I can't. Are you going to play hooky, Pop? No, I am not playing hooky. And don't ever let me catch you, either. <laughs> I'm sorry, pal, but I started this night school and I'm going to stick to it. For what? You're too old to learn anything. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Besides, I'm studying for a very special reason. You see, uh, Junior, would you run along? Huh? Uh, get me an orange. Okay. And peel it. I didn't want to say anything in front of him, but I'm studying so I can talk to my kids. Half the time, I don't know what Babs and Junior are talking about. Oh, naturally. You ain't never, ever been the educator type like me. Not oh, I'm as smart as you are. It's just my kids, the questions they ask. Inflation, atomic energy. Besides, I'm studying so I'll smarten up. Then maybe I can get ahead. It's a plan. See my reasoning? Yeah. Come to the wrestle matches. Will you let me alone, Gillis? Here's the orange, Pop. I peeled it. Go ahead and eat it. <laughs> Junior, let me eat it. Well, it's, it's no good. You can't fill it. I'll fix it. Well, you can fill it with ink, but then when you press the jigger back down, all the ink squirts out again. Oh, you just ain't got no mechanical head. Hold that. There you are. See? Now it's loaded with ink. But the jigger's sticking out. Oh, that. Mm. Oh, oh, gosh, Pop. Junior, why are you always asking me to do things for you? I didn't ask you. <laughs> you should have gone to the wrestling match. Well, I don't want to be around here when your wife sees this. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't afraid of my wife. Junior, we got to keep this between you and me. Oh, Mom will be sure to see it. I should have used invisible ink. Riley, Riley, dear. She's coming. Quick, Junior. Stand in front of it. Make like you're talking. Yeah, you ain't gonna pick up a ride, but... Yeah, okay, Dumplin'. What are you two standing against the wall like that for? Oh, we're, we're playing a spy game. See, we're two spies and we're waiting up against the wall to get shot. What are you talking about? You know, the spy story, Matty Harry. <laughs> He's Matty and I'm Harry. What's ink on your hands for? Oh, ink? Uh, take that blue. It's just a case of very close pain. Oh, Am I going to have to drag you away Please, from that wall? Please, take I... Look at that wall. I've seen it. Ink, you've ruined it. Gosh, Mom, don't blame Pop. He didn't... Oh, so it was you. Now, how many times have I told you not to play with ink? Just for that, there'll be no allowance this week. Oh, Mom, I didn't do it. I'm... Junior! So it was you, after all. Gee, Pop, I didn't mean to. You and me ain't talking. There's one thing I can't stand, it's a squealer. Oh, Pop. <laughs> My own son, a stool pigeon. Oh, it slipped out. I didn't mean it, honest. Of course he didn't. <laughs> Today he's squealing that I spilled ink on the wall. Tomorrow he'll be squealing I'm making two more dollars a week than I told you about. <laughs> oh, really? Thanks for the information. I'm sorry, Pop. Oh, I'll get it, Peg. I'll get it. Oh, hi, 
you, Tony. Good evening, Mr. Riley. <laughs> Good evening, Mrs. and Mr. Riley. Good evening, Mr. Marcellucci. Uh, uh, this is uh, from you for me. Oh, all this fruit and vegetables. Oh, no, we couldn't take it. Oh, please, uh, take it. Hey, but Tony, all that stuff costs dough. Oh, that's uh, nothing. The business, uh, she's a rotten. If you don't eat the fruit, she gets a rotten, too. Please, you take it. Well, if you put it that way... <laughs> oh, this is wonderful. Mr. Riley, you fill my head with education, and I fill your belly with the fruit. Okay, Tony, I'll tell you what. I'll brush you off on your English before we get going. You know, tonight's the test. Oh, the English, yeah, that's the tough one. Oh, it isn't really so hard. Now, Tony, you know you've got to pass that test tonight. Oh, yes, i got to pass, or... Uh... Oh, suppose he doesn't. What of it? No, 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 i got to pass. The final pass, I... I... I don't like to say. Uh, I can't tell you, Peg. It's a secret. Oh, well. But don't worry, Tony. You'll pass. Mr. Riley, you know all of what's in this, uh, Grandma? Oh, this is a grandma. <laughs> sure, I know what's in the grandma. I'll tell you what, Tony. You tell me what you don't get so good, and I'll turn to that part and tell you what it is. Open any part. I don't know what it means all over the book. <laughs> no talking during the examination, please. General drove to Georgie to the sea. Oh, that's the pushover. Who, who's this, George? Only 15 minutes more, students. I think I'll kill myself. <laughs> Who found America? Who found? I don't know, he was lost. <laughs> Time is up, students. One minute to hand in your papers. I know the answer, but she asked the wrong question. No whispering in class. Shh. Don't hide that book. What's wrong with the book? She'll flunk you if she catches you cheating. Well, what's the matter? Quick, hide it. She's coming. Give me that. <laughs> I saw you whispering. Has Mr. Marcellucci been helping you with your answers? Who, me? Uh, no, honest. Uh, what are you holding behind your back, Mr. Riley? <laughs> Nothing. My hands. And what's in your hands, Mr. Riley? Oh, uh, look out. The book. The book. <laughs> Please pick up that book. Mm-hmm. An English grammar. Is this your book? Yes. yes. No, no. Will you shut up? Leave your papers on your desks and leave promptly, please. Good night, Miss Clyde. Just a moment, Mr. Riley. <laughs> please leave, Mr. Marcellucci. Now, I'll take your paper. Yes, ma'am, Miss Clyde. Here you are. Thank you. Miss Clyde, wait a minute. Don't tear them up. I'm sorry, but you don't deserve the privilege of attending a publicly supported school. I'm afraid there's only one thing I can do in this matter. You're not going to keep me in, Miss Clyde. My wife is going to worry about me. I'm forced to expel you. Expel me? No, Miss Clyde, you can't do that. I got two kids. They'll let me out of the house. What will my wife say? I'm sorry, but a pupil who cheats is a bad example to honest pupils, like Tony Marcellucci, for instance, who tried to defend you. I'm sorry, Mr. Riley. Okay. But you forced me to expel you. All right, if that's the way you feel about it, I resign. I don't need your school to get an education. I can go to the library. They got more books than your school. <laughs> and they're quieter in the library, and... And the worst can happen to a guy there is that he gets fined two cents. And to think, I gave up wrestling for you. Junior, why aren't you in bed? Oh, Mom, I'm waiting up for Pop. 
want to apologize about squealing about the ink. You didn't squeal, darling. Oh, well, have it your own way. But your father certainly has some strange ideas. Oh, Mr. Gill. Yeah. Your father ain't home yet, huh? No. Poor guy. I guess he's ashamed to come home. Yeah, that's it. Huh? Oh, I only heard about it because my cousin is the janitor at the school. And he was outside the door when the teacher... When the teacher what? Oh, nothing. I better let him tell you himself. It's none of my business if your father got expelled. Expelled? <laughs> Pop? What for? Oh, I'd rather not say. It's none of my business if your father cheated. <laughs> Pop cheated? No, he wouldn't do that. Not Pop. Pop. Tell Mr. Gillis it's a lie. Tell him he didn't cheat. It's a lie. <laughs> How did you hear about it? Bad news travels fast, pal. <laughs> well, Junior, don't be upset about it. It's just one of those things. Gee, Rally, I'm surprised. Cheating's bad enough, but getting caught. Look, Gillis, you keep quiet about this and don't spread it around or I'll forget that I'm your best friend. Okay, okay. Mumps is the word. I don't believe you cheated, Pop, and tomorrow I'm going to tell your teacher so. Oh, no, no, Junior. If Miss Clyde says I cheated, I cheated. Gosh. What's Mom going to say? Well, she don't have to know about it if... If certain parties don't go squealing. Oh, I take a note. I won't tell her you were expelled, Pop. Honest. Yeah, but won't she think it's funny you ain't going to night school no more? Well, I'll just have to tell her I'm still going and hide my books on school night. She <laughs> expelled. My own Pop expelled. Junior, will you stop using that word? If we must talk about it, just say I graduated suddenly. I guess my will. Now go to bed. Good night, Pop. Good night. You look a little tired, too, Gillis. Why don't you go home? Well, I've done my neighborly duty. Good night, pal. Junior, I thought you said that electric light cord was up here in the closet. It's there somewhere, Mom. That's funny. Your father's school book. Maybe they're mine. No, they're his. I give your father each night to take to his teacher. Maybe saving him up to give her a basketball. You ask me, he hasn't been near that school for four nights. And when he comes home tonight, I'm going to find out why. I think I'll take a little walk. Oh, no, you don't. You think you're going to go out and warn him, but you stay right here. Find out what's going on around school. Geography. Oh, hi, Peg. Hi, Junior. Well, here I am, home again from another hard night at school. <laughs> Gee, I'm hungry, Dumplin'. Could I have something to eat? Yes, have an apple. <laughs> Nice apple. Yes, isn't it, though? No signals, Junior. There's something wrong with that one? No, no, dear. It's just that I hardly ever see you anymore. You're always away at school. Yes, so exhausting. Study, study, study. <laughs> I must have twice as much brains as I had last year. Poor man. Not even time for even a movie. Oh, no. Pop hasn't got time for movies. No, my education is more important. <laughs> Besides, what could I learn at a movie? There's a movie I'd like to see at the Bijou. It's called Love is King. Oh, I couldn't sit through that again. I mean, uh... When did you see Love is King? Well, I, I, I guess it was last night. I dropped in for a minute. I was, I was hungry. Uh-huh. That picture opened tonight, and you were supposed to be at night school, remember? Oh. My God. Uh-huh. Come on, you better give up. Mom knows you haven't been going to night school, Pop. Riley, why haven't you? She dumpling, you sound just like a throwing officer. Riley, why haven't you been going to night school? Well, I left. You left? I quit. Quit? I got expelled. Expelled? What happened? Well, we had an English test, and Miss Clyde accused me of cheating. Cheating? Why, that's ridiculous. Whatever gave her such an idea? Well, I guess it was fine in the grammar book. Where did she find it? My hand, behind my back. <laughs> For that, she accuses me of cheating. Oh, Riley. Well, go ahead. If anybody wants to think I cheated, go ahead and think it. Expelled. All right, so who's going to know? Who's going to know? Everybody, that's who. Well, I can take it. Well, what about your children? You want people pointing at Junior at school and saying his father was expelled for cheating? Anybody point at me, I'll bite his finger. <laughs> go to bed, Junior. Okay, Pop. Oh. What's the matter? Tony Marcellucci's in your class. 
Now I can't buy any more fruit from that nice, honest Tony. He knows, too. Oh, he knows, huh? Well, for your information. Well, what? What is it? Nothing. Nobody's gonna call me a squealer. Oh, Riley, I'm your wife. You can share your troubles with me. Well, maybe I'll tell you tomorrow night. You see, something's gonna happen tomorrow night, and if, if it happens, maybe it'll be okay to squeal on Tony. I'm going to bed now. Mr. Riley ought to be home pretty soon, Miss Clyde. Very well. The class was strenuous tonight, as always, and I rather enjoy just resting a bit. All right. Or I am king oh, you must have seen that movie again tonight. Oh, hiya, Dumplin'. Hello, dear. Well, here I am, home after another hard night at the movies. That's good. <laughs> Miss Clyde, ma'am, teacher. Good evening, Mr. Riley. The most interesting thing has transpired, causing me to undergo a change of attitude regarding your probity and to conclude that you are a man of unsurpassed integrity. Miss Clyde, haven't you insulted me enough? Don't well, get excited. She's paying you a compliment, dear. Perhaps you'd better read this composition, which was handed in to me tonight in class. It was written by Tony Marcellucci. Tony? The subject is friendship. Read it out loud, dear. Friendship. Once upon a time, there was one a man by name of Eton Lasamucha. An obvious pseudonym. No, that's his real name. But he's got it spelled backwards, see? Eton instead of Tony. Yeah, go on. <laughs> and this a man had a one a fine friend by the name of Resta Chiley. Now, who could that be? <laughs> Can't figure that one out. <laughs> so these two mans was good friends. Ah, so nice to have such fine friends like that a man. A friend like that, he don't not make no difference. You don't speak good English. He like you just the same. Then one a night, the Eton do a wrong thing. But everybody think it was his friend who to do that wrong thing. And they stay ashamed at him. He don't say back it was no him. No, he keeps his trap shut. <laughs> ah, that is what is a true friend. End of the story, Tony. Well, what do you think of that, dear? Tony's grammar don't seem to be getting much better, does it? No, but there are more important things even than English. I offer you an apology. Me? What for? You can't bluff anymore, dear. This explains what you did for him. And I'm proud of you. Oh, come on, Peg. Please, don't be kissing a fella in front of his teacher. <laughs> Just one more thing. Why did you assume the blame? Oh. Well, I guess it's all right to tell it now. You see, tonight... Tonight? It's happening right now. i got to go. Where? To the courthouse. What for? I think I know. Come along, my dear. Oh, well, all right. Tony Marcellucci? Yes, Your Honesty. Is this gentleman your witness? Yes, Judge. My good friend, Mr. Riley. That's him. I see. Mr. Riley, were you born in the United States? Yes, sir. Brooklyn? Come right in, ladies. You're welcome here. Now, Mr. Riley, you've known Mr. Marcellucci for at least five years? Yes, sir. Tony? Twice before, you've tried and failed. Yes, Judge, but this time I started good. My friend helped me, too. I come back, Judge, and I keep on coming back till you say, okay, you are in it. Do you know the principles of the Constitution? Oh, I know him by heart. Uh, take it easy, Tony. We, the people of the United States, in order to form a more perfect union, establish justice. And I believe you, Tony. Now I must test your reading. Read this, please. Read it, please. <laughs> Judge, I cannot fool you. I know this one by heart, too. Well, if you can read well enough to have memorized this, I won't test you any further. Let me hear it, please. Four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth upon this continent a new nation, conceived in a liberty, and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created evil. That's fine. That means everybody gets the same with you. Rich guy, poor guy, big shot, bums. Oh, that's fine. Tony, go ahead. 
We are now engaged in a great civil war, testing whether that nation or any nation so conceived and so dedicated can long endure. And that this nation under God shall have the new birth of freedom and that the government of the people, by the people, and for the people shall not perish from the earth. Tony, that was great. That, that was better than I could ever do it. <laughs> Judge, you think I make the great this time? Tony, hold up your right hand. And when you've taken this oath, you will be a citizen of the United States. So that's why Riley wanted Tony to learn English. Yes, Mrs. Riley. And I will support, support the Constitution, Constitution and the and laws, laws of the United, United States, States against, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And, and I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same. I, I take, take this obligation freely without, and without and mental, mental reservation or purpose of evasion. So help me, God. Tony Marcellucci, you are now a citizen of the United States. Thank you, Judge. Thank you. Riley, my friend, shake the hands of one newborn baby American. Doesn't it feel great, Tony? Congratulations, Tony. Congratulations, Tony.